Hello boys and girls and uh, welcome to my lair. Uh, as you can see behind me something special is going on. Um, but first of all, Andy Raphael from eTechnics and uh, today I'm at the eTechnics headquarters where I am all the time. But um, we've got something really special to show you today and it does involve what's behind me. Um, so yeah, we're going to talk about six screen iFinity. There's so much on the internet in regards to iFinity. For those who firstly don't know what iFinity is, uh, it's basically changing um, from a single monitor to gaming on sort of multiple monitors. So obviously you get various different configurations as to what you can have, and that involves sort of you know your uh, sort of triple monitor setup. You can have five screens. You could have sort of three and then two. You can have three and then one. You can have three and then another three, like we've got behind us. There's so many different uh, combinations out there, um, but there's so much information on the internet to tell you about it. So um, today really what we're going to do is we're going to sort of explain to you exactly what Affinity is all about and um, how much it's going to cost and that kind of thing and straight away I'm going to tell you it's not cheap. It really really isn't cheap. It doesn't just involve getting the monitors, you have to get a graphics card that's capable for it. Obviously the rest of your system needs to be um, sort of fairly capable of, of supporting that graphics card because you don't want the rest of your system to bottleneck anything um, in regards to you know what you're actually doing. Um, obviously you could have your graphics card which is absolutely fantastic and then you could be running a, an old processor that really is going to sort of limit that graphics card as to what sort of um, capabilities it should have. Um, so yeah that's really the first step of it. So it's a matter of sort of going out and finding the monitors but first the Firstly, you, you've got to see if you've got the space. Obviously, a setup like this, six monitors, it does take up a hell of a lot of space. I'm quite lucky that you know we've got a, quite a big office here um, at eTechnics headquarters. That you know we've got that there. We've got another setup there. We've got all our power supply testing equipment there. The cupboard behind you, full of all the review goodies, and uh, then we've got all our photography stuff over here. So we're quite lucky that obviously we have this huge amount of space behind us. And just putting my arms out, you can see it's roughly about the same sort of size as the monitors. Um, they're 22 inch monitors, the ones behind me, but obviously you can buy various different size uh, monitors depending on your personal preference and of course budget. Um, even looking at these, these are the Dell uh, P2210s and they retail anywhere, if you can get a good deal, about £150 each. Obviously for that price you can get um, 24 inch monitors for anywhere £100 upwards, but you're paying for the quality. Dell, in my opinion, makes some great quality monitors uh, I use a couple of Dell monitors myself, barring the ones behind me. And uh, so once you've realised, you know, you have the space for it, if you've got the space for three monitors, obviously you should have the space for another three above it, so you've got no problem with six monitors. Um, once you've done that, you do have to buy a stand as well, which I'll show you the stand in a minute as well. Um, that's not cheap. Um, XFX make one, it's about £300. I will tell you now, scan.co.uk, uh, they make one and their one is a lot cheaper than um, than the XFX one and we will have a review of that um, actual stand monitor um, stand because it's quite unique in what it can do it's sort of modular in a way you can add um, or take away uh, monitors from it so that's for another video and uh, obviously another review on eTechnics.com uh, but for now we'll just sort of go back to the Affinity stuff that we're looking at today. So you've got your sort of monitor stand which can be anywhere from sort of 150, 300 quid, anywhere around that sort of ballpark figure. You've got your monitors, as I say, if you're looking at these, these are 150 quid each. So with the stand you're looking at sort of a grand well over, uh, well over a grand. So straight away that's not cheap. And then you've got to actually get the graphics card as well. Now we are using, bear with me, the Asus Asus or Asus uh, Radeon 6950 Direct CU2 graphics card. Um, the one that we're actually using today is a 1 gig, but um, from what I can tell, they do do a 2 gig version as well. Um, so great sort of stuff with that. Uh, this is the box for it. Everyone knows, I'm sure, of the CU, Direct CU2 um, branding. This is what the actual cooler looks like itself. I will sort of take you off the tripod. You can have a look at the cooler and the rest of the setup that we're going to be using for all our tests. Um, but the reason specifically that we've used the Direct CU2 is the fact of this. So if I just show you that, you can see there are six outputs. Now most graphics cards will have five outputs, 
which is all well and good if you're only going to use three monitors or four or five, but we're using six. So there's a couple of choices really that you've got in regards to that. You can either daisy chain the monitors, which means you can't have these monitors because they are only DisplayPort 1.1. So you'd have to get DisplayPort 1.2 monitors, which means you can daisy chain them. So you put an input into one, input out of that one into the next one, out of that one into the next one, out of that one into the next one, and so forth. Um, that can be very expensive because DisplayPort 1.2 monitors are ridiculously expensive compared to sort of you know the older style like we've got behind us. The other option is to buy a mini DisplayPort hub. So uh, you basically take from your graphics card mini DisplayPort or DisplayPort, um, entirely up to you, into the hub and then out of the hub from there. That's about 150 quid for that price. That's another monitor. Um, so really, personal preference and budget really come into it. So we're using the older style and obviously this card which. It's relatively um, well priced compared to other 6950s on the market so it's not like we've had to spend another hundred pound to go out and buy this specific card that has six ports compared to a card that only has five it's just Asus have sort of filled that gap that no other manufacturer really did obviously they've seen the potential of iFinity and decided we need to create a graphics card for that market and that's exactly what they've done and uh, good job Asus you know you filled that market that really did need to be filled so once you've got your space, you know you know how many monitors you can have, you've obviously worked out your budget for the monitors and the graphics card, that's pretty much all there is to it, um, as well as the stand to hold the monitors as well. You can get the ones that clamp onto the desk, you can get the ones that just lay out onto the desk. There's so much on the internet, all I'd say is have a little Google into it. But um, for now, what I'm actually going to do is, you can see Heaven is running behind me, and uh, it does look quite fantastic on six monitors. We're going to be running um, loads of other um, tests as well, we're going to be running Batman Arkham Asylum, Dirt 2, Dirt 3, Just Cause 2, Mafia 2 and Metro 2033. Now, they are all the games that we would usually run at eTechnics for all our graphics card tests. So we thought we may as well sort of be consistent. We're going to be using the same sort of settings for um, all of them. But the, there are a few sort of drawbacks in the fact that anti-aliasing really makes six screens lag, as you can expect. But you don't really notice it because you're too sort of focused on the six screens. And when you're sitting here, and um, straight away you could probably see it now, these side monitors are actually curved ever so slightly and um, so the only ones that are flat are the middle two so when you're actually looking at it, it's very much your peripheral vision you can see this it's not focusing on the monitors but it is sort of seeing the general um, sort of you know view in the side in the corner of your eye which is really really fantastic stuff uh, so for now what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to take you off the tripod and uh, show you the system Okay, so now we're off the tripod, we're just going to really show you around, so um, nothing too spectacular really, um, ignore the system over there, that's uh, the main test, uh, main sort of uh, system that we use, uh, resting on a box, but um, as you can see we have six Dell P2210 monitors, and it's held together using this sort of bracket stand here. Now. The only problem that you've really got is obviously the space and the amount of sheer cables. As you can see, all of these cables along here. This particular bracket uh, actually mounts on using a sort of clamp system, but you can get ones that are just on like a, a fixed stand. And then you can see that these monitors are Visa mount, so uh, the plate just goes in there and uh, that sort of screws down. As you can see in the four points in the four corners, and then comes off into this bracket, and then you can obviously move them along. And across, depending on how many monitors you've got, you may have six, you may have four. And these particular brackets have got sort of a screw point fixing on the back. So uh, obviously you can either have one of these sort of arms of uh, part of the bracket, or you can have two, like we've got one down here, and then we've got this one as well. So very, very simple. It's just, as I say, there is a, there's a lot of cables. Uh, these are just sort of the display cables, and then down here is all of our plugs for the uh, actual power so uh, very very simple in regards to the cables you can see that they're all really connected via DVI but um, we've got some converters to take it from DVI to DisplayPort as you can see in the back of here two are connected via native DVI and then we've got four which are DisplayPort adapters which come off and as you can see connect into DVI here so the graphics card itself is this beast here, um, we're using the Crosshair 5 Formula uh, motherboard AM3+. Plus. We've got a uh, AMD X6 1100T um, processor which is running at 3.8, we wanted to sort of 
uh, up it a little bit um, in terms of the speed just so the GPU is not bottlenecked in any shape or form. Now this particular graphics card has two power uh, inputs. We've got a 6-pin PCI Express and an 8-pin. And uh, you can see being a direct CU2 graphics card, it's got the two fans with the uh, fancy cooler on there as well. Uh, other than that, specs wise, we're using a beefy Thermaltake 1200 watt um, tough power power supply. We've got a Kingston 96 gig SSD um, V plus 100. And memory wise, we're using some of the new Corsair Vengeance um, 8 gig 1866 megahertz memory. We have had to take the fan off the C14 on the bottom because of the clearance issues, but we've got one on the top which is doing its job ever so nicely. And that's all sitting on the Cooler Master test lab um, test bench, which is really handy uh, for people who are constantly changing uh, their computer hardware. So that's pretty much the graphics card. You can see the part of the cooler there. Um, very simple, really. It's, there's not a, a mass amount to it. And as you can see, we're still sort of chugging away on heaven and uh, no problem at all in regards to that. So uh, what we're actually going to do now is uh, have a look at these monitors and how they perform in uh, in our benchmarks. So um, stay tuned, and uh, in our next video, we'll be showing uh, Batman: Arkham Asylum. So uh, stay tuned.